Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Hashem Ali Khan. So far, three videos I have completed on partnership. Now, this is the last and final video on theoretical part of partnership accounts. One, in this video, I am going to explain you about the adjustment, accounting adjustment required whenever a partner retires from the firm or on the death of a partner. The previous three videos I have explained you regarding the meaning of the term partnership, features of partnership, capital accounts and profit and loss appropriation account first video. Second and third video I have explained you about the adjustment required on admission of a partner. Now in this retirement of partner what are the accounting treatment to be made whenever a partner retires. So before explaining in detail regarding retirement, take the screenshot of the points. Then I'll explain every point in detail. Now, <clears throat> retirement or death of partner. Usually a partner has a right to retire from the firm after giving suitable notice. Normally in every partnership deed, partnership agreement, one clause will be given that whenever a partner wants to retire from the firm, they have the right to retire but prior notice should be given. That normally contains, this clause contains in the partnership agreement. The following points should be taken into consideration on the retirement of a partner. <clears throat> what is the accounting treatment to be done <clears throat> whenever a partner retires? The first one treatment of goodwill. Just like goodwill has to be treated at the time of admission of a partner, similarly goodwill has to be treated at the time of retirement of a partner. So at the time of retirement of a partner, the continuing partners will gain. Because suppose, example, three partners are there A, B and C. The profits earlier were shared by all the three partners A, B, C. Now C is retiring. Now in future, only two partners will be there A and B. So earlier profits were shared by three partners and now after retirement of C, only two partners will share the profits. That means they will gain. The continuing partners will gain on account of uh, the profit of the retiring partner. That's why they have to pay goodwill to the retiring partner. A and B has to give goodwill to the retiring partner. So in case of retirement of partner, the continuing partners will gain in terms of profit sharing ratio. Therefore, they have to write, they have to give the retiring partner his share of goodwill. So what is the entry for retire, goodwill given to retiring partner? The entry will be continuing partner's capital account debit and retiring partner's capital account credit. Example, A, B and C. C is retiring, going out, going out of the partnership. Now continuing partners are A and B. So entry will be A's capital account debit, B's capital account debit to C's capital. The retiring partner is C, so his capital should be credited. And the continuing partners A and B, capital account should be debited. And this share, the A and B will share the goodwill in the gaining ratio. What is gaining ratio? I'll explain. <coughs> Instead of making the adjustment of goodwill in the above manner, Another practice is followed. Normally, this is the correct method of treatment of goodwill at the time of retirement of the old partner. But in India, we have a common practice, an old practice, which is not suggested by AS26, but still prevailing. The effect of this practice and the new practice is same. Ultimate effect will be same. What is the old method? The practice is first to raise goodwill account in the books by debiting goodwill account and creating capital account of all partners with full value in the old profit sharing ratio. The old practice, we, uh, practice was we debit goodwill account. We raise goodwill account. Goodwill account debit to A's capital, to B's capital, to C's capital. Right? A goodwill is raised, debited. And all partners' capital account A, B, C in the old profit sharing ratio. 
Then secondly, then goodwill account is written off by debiting continuing partner's capital account in the new profit sharing ratio. First entry, we raise the goodwill. Second entry, we write off the goodwill. Goodwill account is credited and continuing partners will be debited. A's capital account debit, B's capital account debit to goodwill account. Now by passing this entry, what will happen? Goodwill account will get closed. In the first entry, we have debited goodwill account. Second entry, we have credited goodwill account. So goodwill account will get closed. So ultimately, A's capital debited, B's capital debited and C's capital credited. So the net effect on the partner's capital account will be same. The net effect will be same. Right? But this practice is not as per the AS26. Accounting standard 26 will not suggest this method because goodwill should not be raised. Inherent goodwill should not be recorded. Only purchased goodwill should be recorded according to AS26. The effect, whether you go by this new method or old method, the ultimate effect will be same. Only presentation recording will be different. That's all. Second adjustment. The first adjustment on the retirement of a partner is the treatment of goodwill. We have discussed. Now, second method is revaluation of assets and liabilities. This revaluation of assets and liability will be exactly same what we have done on admission of a partner. All the assets and liabilities will be revalued at the time of retirement of a partner. And what are the entries already I have explained you in the last video. So if you have not watched, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject advanced accounting new. In that subject, select the videos of partnership. Third video, watch the second and third video. Be perfect about how to make the revaluation of assets and liability. And whatever profit or loss on revaluation will be shared by all partners, including the retiring partner. So entry for profit, entry for profit will be revaluation account debit to A's capital to B's capital to C's capital. The revaluation profit is shared by all partners in the old profit sharing ratio. Right? If there is a loss, then A's capital account debit, B's capital account debit, C's capital account debit to revaluation. Right? Then treatment of undistributed profits. This is also exactly same what we have done on admission of a partner. At the time of retiring of a partner, if there are any accumulated profits or reserves, that accumulated profits and reserves should be distributed among all partners. The entry will be reserves account debit, accumulated profit account debit to A's capital to B's capital to C's capital. All the partners, including the retiring partner, they will share it in the old profit sharing ratio. The next is Transfer of amount due to retiring partner to his loan account. Normally what will happen? The whole amount due to the retiring partner will not be immediately paid. It may be partly paid and the remaining amount will be treated as a loan. Later on in future it will be paid. So first thing is how much is the amount due to retiring partner that should be immediately transferred to his loan account. The amount payable to retiring partner should be ascertained after making a war adjustment. This should be transferred to his loan account until it is paid off. The so entry for transferring is retiring partner's capital account debit, retiring partner's loan or loan account credit. Loan account credit. By passing this entry, retiring partner's capital account will get closed and that amount is transferred to his loan account. That's all. Now gaining ratio. I have explained you what are the adjustment to be made on the retirement of a partner. And these points you have to remember because these points we have to apply in solving the problems in the coming videos. Now gaining ratio. Whenever a partner retires, the continuing partner will gain on account of profit sharing ratio. Earlier, before retirement, the profits will sh was shared by three partners. Example, three partners. But when C retired, in future, the profit will be shared by two partners. In that case, the continuing partner is gaining on account of retirement. So in case of retirement of a partner, 
the continuing quarter stand to gain because future profits are going to be shared only between them. Earlier, the profits were shared by A, B, C. Now in future, the profit will be shared only by A and B. In this way, they are gaining. So the gaining ratio is nothing but the difference between the new ratio and the old ratio. Example, the old ratio was 1 by 3, 1 by 3, 1 by 3. And the new ratio is 1 by 2, 1 by 2. That means the new ratio is higher. 1 by 2 is more than 1 by 3. Right? So the new ratio, gaining ratio will be new ratio minus old ratio. And uh, if the new profit sharing ratio is not given in the problem, it is presumed that the continuing partners will share the future profits in the old ratio that existed between them prior to retirement. Sometimes the new profit sharing ratio will not be given in the problem. In that case, our assumption is after the retirement of one of the partner, the remaining partners will continue to share in the old ratio. In the old ratio. Example, A, B, C were sharing the profit 2 is to 3 is to 5. 2 is to 3 is to 5 was the old profit sharing ratio between A, B and C. Now C retired, drop the 5. Now remaining ratio will be 2 is to 3. So if nothing is given in the problem, we assume that continuing partners will share in the same old ratio as that ratio before retirement. Before retirement. Now gaining ratio, the formula for gaining ratio is new ratio minus old ratio, remember. Now in examination, you may get a theory question regarding what are the differences between set sacrificing ratio and gaining ratio. Now three differences I have explained, you have to remember and you can confidently write in examination the theory part. Sacrificing ratio, SR stands for sacrificing ratio. Sacrificing ratio is calculated at the time of admission of a partner and gaining ratio is calculated at the time of retirement or death of partner. First. Second, sacrificing ratio is old ratio minus new ratio. Sacrificing ratio, the formula is old ratio minus new ratio. Whereas gaining ratio formula is new ratio minus old ratio. That is the difference. Last one, sacrificing ratio is the ratio in which old partner sacrificed in favor of the new partner. So sacrificing ratio will arise on the admission of a partner. On the admission of a partner, the old partner will sacrifice some of their profit in favor of the new partner. But gaining ratio will arise on retirement. On retirement of one of the partner, so they are gaining on account of share of that retiring partner. That's all. These are the differences between sacrificing ratio and the gaining ratio. The last topic in this chapter is regarding death of a partner. What are the accounting treatment, what are the adjustments to be made on the death of a partner? Now the problems arising on the death of a partner are very much similar to those on retirement of a partner. Just now I have explained you the accounting treatment on the retirement of partner. Same treatment we have to apply in case of death of a partner. Like first of all treatment of goodwill. We have to adjust for goodwill on the death of a partner also. Then we have to make all the revaluation of assets and liability. We have to make the uh, accumulated profits or losses. So same adjustment normally will be followed in retirement as well as death of a partner. The retirement can be anticipated and planned. The difference is in case of retirement, the retirement can be anticipated and planned one. In the partnership agreement, it will be written that whenever a partner wants to retire, he must retire on so and so day. Normally it will be on the end of the year. When the books of accounts are closed, when the accounting year ends, at that time only partner should retire. That is the clause given. So it easily, it will be convenient for the business to make all adjustment on the retirement of a partner because it is being done at the time of closing the accounts. 
Generally, the date of retirement coincides with the date of closing of the firm's books. Just know I told. Normally, retirement will be made at the time of closing of the books of accounts. The death may occur at any time during the course of the accounting period, but the difference between retirement and death is the retirement is a planned one, anticipated one, but death is completely uncertain. It may happen at any time during the trading period. Now, in the event of death of a partner, the legal representative of the deceased partner, deceased partner means the partner who died, right? The legal representatives or legal heirs of the deceased partner is entitled to receive the, from the firm the amount, the following amount due for the deceased partner. So whenever a partner dies, all the amounts due to the deceased partner will be transferred to the legal representatives. So what are the amount due to the legal representative? Balance in the capital account as per the last balance sheet. For example, every year the accounts are closed on 31st December. And one of the partner expired, died on 31st March. That means immediately before 31st March, on 31st December, at the time of balance sheet on 31st December, how much is the amount due to the deceased partner? That amount. Secondly, interest on capital, if any. If any interest on capital is due to the deceased partner, that should be taken. Then share of goodwill. At the time of death of a partner, again, goodwill has to be calculated, evaluated and share of goodwill should be given to the legal representative of the deceased partner. Then share in accumulated profits. Any accumulated profits are there. So share of the deceased partner in that accumulated profit should also be given to the legal representative. Share in revaluation of assets and liability. Just like when a partner retires, all the assets and liability are to be revalued. Same, at the time of death of the partner, also the assets and liability should be revalued and any profit or loss on revaluation, that share should be given to the legal representative of the deceased partner. Share in the profit of the firm from the last balance sheet to the date of death. This is the new point. <coughs> Normally, in case of uh, retirement of the partner, the retirement will take place on the last date of the year when the accounts are closed but death may occur at any time. So legal representatives are entitled to the share of profit from the last balance sheet to the date of death. Example, the partner expired on 31st March. The last balance sheet was prepared on 31st December. So from 1st January to 31st March, this three months profit has to be calculated. And from that profit, share of profit of the deceased partner has to be calculated. That share will also be given to the legal representatives. So all these are the amounts which are due to the deceased partner. And that amount due should be transferred to the legal representative. The total amount due to the deceased partner is transferred to his executor's account and the entry will be deceased partner's capital account debit. Executor's account should be created. Executors are the legal representatives. Example, C expired, C died. So entry will be C's capital account debit. C's capital should be closed and the amount should be transferred to a new account executors of C. A new account is opened. The amount due to C is transferred to executors account. The amount payable may be paid immediately or in installments. Normally one clause will be given in the partnership agreement that at the time of death of a partner the amount due to the legal representative will not be paid wholly. It will be paid 50% and after 6 months 50 percent Like that some conditions are given. Huh, if it is to be paid immediately, then whole amount should be paid immediately to the legal representative or otherwise it may be paid in installments. Now, 
in the absence of any agreement, if payment is made in installment, it will carry interest schedule of 6% per annum. Provisions of Partnership Act. Provisions of Partnership Act says, if the amount is not paid wholly to the legal representative, it is paid in installments, then the amount due will carry an interest schedule of 6% per annum. And this provision will apply only if the partnership agreement is silent. Huh? If partnership agreement contains any clause regarding this point, then it will be applicable. That's it. So these are the provisions regarding retirement and death of a partner. So in four videos, I have completed all the theoretical aspects of partnership accounts one, where we have partnership capital accounts, then admission of a partner, retirement of a partner and death of a partner. From the next video onwards, inshallah, we'll start the problems on these partnership accounts. But remember, the problems are based on theory. So my suggestion, if you want the complete command, complete grasp on this chapter, watch all the theory videos first. And in examination, you may get a theory question also. Don't depend only on problems. So you should be perfect on theory concepts also. So inshallah we'll start the problems on partnership accounts one in the next video.